issues need to be addressed well and truly before the country's absolutely denuded and bare. I don't like water running away and I just don't like bare dirt. Every time I drive past it or around it, you just it seems to disappear more into the grass and the trees and it's slowly eroding good viable grazing country into a gully. We can never get this dirt back. We've already lost this amount. Yeah. And this is only ever going to get bigger. We've we've got to put a stop to it and we've got to find a way to put a stop to it. The Fitzroy Basin is the largest catchment that flows out into the Great Barrier Reef and gully erosion is one of the major erosion processes occurring. So it's very important not only for local water quality but for the water quality that ends up on the Great Barrier Reef and in the lagoon and that we work with landholders to address those erosion processes. The six sites were selected for a variety of different reasons. One was their location um, and the ability to then use those sites for demonstration purposes. They also of course had to have completed the Grazing Best Management Practice Program and that's a requirement for all of our Fitzroy Basin programs and our Australian Federal Government funded programs. We provided services of a grazing land management officer who went out and did a one-on-one -on -one consultation with the landholders. We also contracted a soil conservation um, consultant from Burnett Mary Regional Group and he went out with our grazing land management officer John Al and put together site specific action plans for the project sites. For landholders, gullies are a huge concern um, when they're mustering for their workplace health and safety, if they're riding along on their motorbikes and, and come across a gully, it's, it's extremely dangerous. It's also dangerous for their cattle and their horses and their animals. They also lose a lot of really good grazing land with all these gullies, so there's a lot of topsoil that, that is moving and they're not getting that pasture growth on there. Therefore, it's a kilos per hectare issue that they're looking at there with their gullies. From FBA's point of view, gully erosion is a, is a big issue because of the amount of sediment that moves from those sites. The six sites that we went to all had their own specific plans. Um, within those plans there was lots of different erosion mitigation strategies undertaken. There was chutes put in, there was a lot of uh, rock used, there was diversion banks, uh, water spreading banks through uh, stick rake lines and those sorts of things. What's so interesting about this site at Morang, this site in particular, is that the landholder actually needed an additional water point as well. So our soil conservation consultant was able to work with that brief and was able to build a dam for, for water storage, which then also reduced the water that was then running into the impacted area of the gully. The worst of the two of those gullies was that steep that we had cattle dying in it. What used to be a, a 15 foot drop is now a lovely smoothed out waterway. You live your life with these things in the back of your head and you wonder how you'll deal with them. And to some degree you, you wonder how or where to start I suppose. And, and now we've had some people with the expertise come and show us a, a, a way to go through it. Yeah, it's a bit of a relief I suppose. Oakey Creek is an, another of our sites. It was at Springshaw in the Springshaw region. The, the gullies were extremely significant. So it was about four hectares, but it was completely gullied. Uh, very, very sodic, um, B horizon soil with, with extreme gullying. It was probably a, an embarrassment to me. Um, it's been there all my life, with my father's there too. It was basically a lunarscape. It was a bit of country that I'd never even showed anyone because I take a fair bit of pride in my place here of where my grass grows and, and, and people will struggle to find bare country on my place. It has been completely dozed in, completely reshaped, ripped. It's then had diversion banks put on it, um, some amelioration with gypsum put on it and been seeded very heavily with um, grasses like bisset creeping bluegrass um, and some secker and wind cassia and, and a few other legumes. You, know, you feel pretty proud that you've done something and I'll be really happy to see what it's going to look like in 12 months time, two years time, you know, the grass growing back on it. It's a huge rate that those gullies are moving at and it's a huge amount of soil that's going into our creek systems and then eventually to the Great Barrier Reef. Part of the idea was to look at uh, gully erosion that's uh, uh, quite severe and to see what we can do with those sites. So in the different soil types we've been looking at gullies that have at least uh, two metres deep or thereabouts. Sites that are moving a lot, of, uh, a lot of soil every year. If we can heal those sites up and reduce the, the soil loss dramatically from what was happening there before, it'll make a significant difference in, with uh, soil loss and, uh, and the quality of the water going out of those catchments. Another site we uh, worked on was Lillian Vale up in the Middlemount area. 
the floods that went through uh, degraded the area quite significantly. So we had uh, large areas there that were eroding on the creek banks and also back into the paddocks and affecting uh, fencing and that type of thing. We found having the cattle there causes quite a lot of erosion, but it's the type of soil too that erodes and if we can prevent the soil being washed down the creek, we see it as, as an opportunity. So we diverted water with diversion banks. Uh, we did a rock shoot in one site where it was the, the worst site that was eroding back under fencing and that worked quite well. It's starting to grass up nicely. We've also uh, excluded stock from the whole area, looking like it's going to uh, uh, rehabilitate very nicely. Myrtle Park was, was one of the erosion projects that we worked with. Um, it's located at Comet. It was a difficult site to work with. There was a, a lot of water coming through off the ranges in that area, um, coming through to a small discharge point um, and was doing a lot of damage with deepening their gullies um, and making them, them really sort of out of control. It would be level almost at the top of these banks after big rainfall events of three to four inches. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of force coming to a narrow point. It is tough for people to put money in the things they don't see a big benefit out of, but long term, not just us, it's our future. Sometimes it's little things that, that make the big difference. You do lots of little things and you get a big outcome. The work that was done in that site was to, to put chutes in. There were a few weirs put at the bottom of those the leaky weirs to put at the bottom of those gullies to, to hold back that sediment um, and then let the water go through clear and, and flowing. Four of the sites also had photogrammetry imagery taken so that we could um, survey the, the area to see what the, the site was like pre-works and then post-work. The photogrammetry imagery that FBA has used for, for these erosion sites is a really new and innovative process that we're using. So they're on drones and previous to, to now, we haven't been able to use that technology and we're really excited to see the data that we can get off that to help target other erosion projects. Uh, the Brussels project site uh, was quite an interesting site. It was, it was quite diverse. There was two sites that we dealt with. Uh, they were fairly extensive and pretty dramatic. So we've used gravel to uh, fill in some of the gully heads. And we've also used some uh, rock chutes to, uh, to deliver water into the gully floor in the main river there. Well, I think the big thing is, is removing a hazard, basically. I think that's what I see it more than anything else as a, as a hazard. Address the problem here with the erosion and, and try and minimise any any future damage really. And we just have to, you know, try and get it to a point where it's manageable and that it's, um, that it's you know, not going to get worse basically. Most producers have uh, a feeling that they, they do want to be saving their soil. They hate to see their soil washing away. They do hate to see uh, water quality being damaged. They hate to see the damage on the reef. At Eatonvale, the erosion site was very active. Uh, I first went to that site as a field officer seven years ago and so the difference that I've seen alone in seven years was, was really massive. Um, but it, it's very highly erosive soils. The landholder has um, exceptional ground cover. It was probably an area of the place that I wasn't impressed with and not proud of. And the fact that there was a lot of erosion and it was very uh, poor quality of, of, of soil type because of the erosion and very little grass cover. It was now um, I'll be pretty confident that we'll get that grass there now because we've disturbed that soil and slowed the water runoff. Well now that we've got it all done, all the banks and things in place, yeah I'm, I'm very impressed with it. So we diverted water with diversion banks, uh, we did a rock shoot in one site where it was the, the worst site that was eroding back under fencing and that worked quite well, it's starting to grass up nicely. We've also uh, excluded stock from the whole area, looking like it's going to uh, rehabilitate very nicely. I think gullies are quite a significant issue for the Fitzroy Basin and also for most other catchments really. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, is always there. When you get it, uh, periods of, of large wet events like the, uh, the flooding that's happened since 2010 through to the, to the present, uh, it really exacerbates things and and uh, areas that may have not lost a lot of soil for many years might lose tons and tons of soil very quickly. 
The landholders that attended the demonstration days um, have benefited in enormous ways. I think they've, they've learnt a lot. It's also opened them up to understanding that everybody's got gullies. Um, they are a, an issue for, for everybody and we need to start addressing those gullies. That knowledge and capacity building is, is what's really important. So the days were very successful. We had over 135 people register for the events and we had them come from Cape York, from Brisbane, and then even locally we had landholders travelling to all three of the events, which was fantastic. For people to have turned up today, they obviously think there is something to be gained out of it. And if they can take even a little piece home with them and start doing it at their own place, then we'll have gained plenty for, for the Fitzroy Basin anyway. Without funding for us, with all the different financial strains that we have, we would never have put together a program like this other than to do the small amounts that we were doing. I mean, the, the erosion mitigation for us was, gee, we've got a bulldozer going past, spend two hours of your time because that's about all we could afford in fuel. They're all very, very excited that they've done this work and, and that it's working really well. It is a long project, but I think it's definitely worthwhile. Yeah, I think we'll get a lot more benefits than I first originally thought. Trying to convince people that you're trying to help is very hard. You know, it just is. It's just, I don't know why. It's just that animosity that seems to be in the bush. If you wish to be staying in 1950, well, you're in 1950. But if you want to be in 2050, well, you've got to be educated and move forward. So I suppose the best lesson out of it to take away is do something. Don't just do nothing. If you're doing something, then at least you're making a start.